Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. Phil and Ryan, it's all I can do, Ryan, not to yawn in front of you. But we will get on right down on the business here on early, early on this Thursday morning, uh, October 19th. Does UConn really have the hardest schedule out of all the top 25 teams that were just revealed that's what we're going to break down this morning. Just very quickly, Ryan, we're not going into every team, but specifically the UConn Huskies. I will let you go first, and I will go second. Um, but that's a question, Ryan, for you. What do you, What is your takeaways? What do they have to work on this season? But, again, does the UConn Huskies really have the hardest schedule in 2023? Yeah, I'm kind of excited for this episode because this is kind of a more updated version of the – the schedule summary that we already posted about the the non-conference and the in-conference schedule. Now that we have the the first official rankings of the season, and one of us is covering a team from in the conference, and the other is covering a team from outside of the conference. So, uh, yeah, I mean, UConn might have some trouble with these teams. This is kind of the teams that we think that uh, could give UConn the most trouble when they do play them this season. Like we've already said, UConn definitely doesn't have an easy schedule in just the first month. They played two ranked teams, Maryland and UCLA. December, they played Texas, North Carolina, and Louisville, who are also ranked. And then later in the season, they played Notre Dame and South Carolina. So by no means at all is this schedule going to be easy. Uh, and of course, the Big East opponents have been pretty tough, too. Uh, definitely not a cakewalk in years past, but... Speaking about the Big East, the team that I'm going to focus on today are the Creighton Blue Jays. They start the season ranked 22nd. And like I mentioned earlier, when we broke down the Big East schedule, uh, Creighton was going to be a, probably the toughest team in that conference and definitely the team to look out for. They have six seniors. One of them is Lauren Jensen, who, in my opinion, she transferred from Iowa her second season with Creighton. I think she's going to have another uh, great season with Creighton this season. Uh, and I really expect her to be kind of the facilitator on offense, the one that's going to most games kind of uh, kickstart that offense and kind of get this team rolling. Uh, UConn plays them once in January, again in February. So I think one of those teams or, or both of those games, excuse me, are going to be tough. And I wouldn't be surprised if UConn, uh, does lose one of those games. It's definitely not going to be easy, especially going to Creighton. All right, so for me, we all know the journey ended against Ohio State, and when you leave a 73 spot on the table, when you give up to your opponent 73 points a game, Ryan, I think it starts right off the bat for me. I'm going to say yes. The UConn Huskies have one of the more hardest schedules out of all the top 25 teams, and I'll tell you why, Ryan, is because the question marks. I'll go back to, you know, I, I again, I want to trust this team so bad, and I do. I think especially starting with K.K. Arnold and the rest of the freshmen coming in, they have a lot of talent. I cannot wait to see the new names on the floor. With that said, we already remember that Gino said that these uh, ladies will get a lot of playing time, a lot of play time. The new names, the new freshmen coming in will get a lot of playing time this season coming up. But I can tell you right now, Ryan, the only reason why I say that is because I think there are a lot of question marks still left out on the floor. Now, if this was, say, five, six, even seven years ago, I think you and I would be sitting here saying, Ryan, the UConn Huskies always have one of the easiest schedules, right, in, in yeah, all yeah. basketball. That's because they would roll right through every team, right? November, December, January, February. Roll through even March, right? Even March. Roll through every team. Uh-uh. I don't think not this time, Ryan. And I'll tell you why is because – when you look at the schedule, especially when you and I are growing up there, we bring it up yet again. It's exactly, I believe, four weeks from today, number 14, Maryland, and number two, UConn. I can actually say the rankings now. To me, it starts right away. To me, it starts right away. You have Maryland. You have Brenda Freese in Maryland, number 14. Ryan, you have UCLA. Ryan, you have number 13, Texas. Okay, you have UNC December the 10th. That's a lot. That is a lot to start out. The UConn women's basketball team has to be on their absolute A game, Ryan, if they want to make a statement early in the season. Now, we all know in sports, it's usually about how you finish and not how you start. But, Ryan, I'm going to tell you right now, man, it, it starts 
getting scary personally for me very early. And I tell you now, with one game and then one player, you wanted you requested that. So I picked the UCLA women's basketball team as one of their most toughest challenges. Now, I'm not saying anything's easy about Maryland, my Maryland Terps. I'm not saying anything's easy about the Terps, but I did pick UCLA out of respect uh, for you and your request. UCLA number four, UCLA, Ryan, they have to travel there November 24th. Um, so it looks like the day, I don't know if that, I think that's the day after Thanksgiving, but anyhow, and then I had my eyes set on their their toughest opponent, one of their toughest opponents, UCLA, and one of play one of the players that will give them uh one of their more worst nightmares or headaches trying to match up against them, right? Um, is Charisma Osborne, the graduate student at UCLA. Um, if you remember UCLA season was cut short by who else? Number one, South Carolina in March, um, this past March. And she put up 14 in that game. I just think it depends on matchups here, whether the UConn Huskies go with zone on defense, man on man coverage. Um, I think that one thing is that you and I agree on is turnovers. The turnovers have to stop. I mean, it's it's that simple. Um, because a lot of times, even though I I remember missing a lot of episodes and I was kicking myself for that with you last season. And I remember you did a, an amazing job when you went on the recaps. I, I I just remember the one thing that we kept hearing over and over again yeah. was uh, turnovers. Yeah, you know, every turnover, time. You, you had to limit the turnovers. So, Ryan, that, that's what I have. I'm sorry to go on that little, that little uh, uh, rant, if you will, about how important it is to start off strong. Usually we talk about how, fin- how we finish the season, but – yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm and again with so many question marks and how this team rolls out, I just had to see the UConn Huskies. I trust them, right? But I have to see them against a ranked team and, and see. I don't know. Is it safe to say what the plan is? We all know what the plan is to win, but a lot of question marks. Well, I think it's also because we we haven't really seen this team completely healthy and kind of play as a collective unit with with everybody on the floor, of course, there's, there's been a lot of moving pieces and uh, dealing with, with injuries and a couple other things that we saw Mm -hmm. uh, that we never thought we'd, we'd see before last season. So it's definitely been a roller coaster. And I I think all these questions and uh, you know, kind of, kind of worries, I guess you could say start to arise when we do all have all these tough, uh, you know, top 25 ranked opponents before we get into the Big East schedule. So, you know, UConn's playing all these tough opponents so early in the season. So, like you mentioned, it is really important to get off to a really strong start and not to drop a lot of these games to these tough opponents when they do play them. So, uh, you know, they definitely have to be on top of their game and play their best uh, every single time they go out there, uh, especially against all these ranked opponents, because if they drop a lot of these uh it's not going to be easy going forward uh you know throughout the season it it does get a little easier i guess you could say when they do dive into the big east schedule but uh, it's definitely important that they that they kind of control themselves and uh play really good through these stretch of really tough opponents and not only that i wanted to bring up very quickly ucla in the pac-12 you know, you can depend. Now, I'm not saying you can't depend on the on the UConn Huskies, but think about it, Ryan. I, I took a look, and and I just wanted to get your take very quickly on this, too, before we get into comments. I took a look at some of the resumes of other players, and it's not something – it's something we obviously know injuries have been a struggle for the UConn Huskies. But when you talk about players that could give UConn a nightmare this season, you know, a headache when they, when they go up to face them as far as matchups, I mean – Ryan, I'll go back to Charisma Osborne, uh, the player for the a graduate student I brought up for uh, UCLA. When you look at her resume, I mean, Ryan, she started 29 of the Bruins' 31 games in her freshman season. Ryan, she started each of the Bruins' 23 games this season, okay? She started in all 28 games she played in 21 and 22, and she played in 36 of 37. She played in 36 of 37 games during her senior campaign, all right? I'm hoping, with that said, I'm hoping, Ryan, that we can – I know there were some of these UConn Huskies 
now this is the final years. Uh, they're very important. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just hoping and, and keeping my fingers crossed and praying that we can have th this, this dependability, this durability out of uh, especially the freshmen coming in. And, and, and once we get to their senior year, it was good. That's where it really all starts. And it's staying healthy. Hopefully when we get to their KK Arnold senior year, her resume is stacked. Ryan, she might've missed one or two games, maybe, but Ryan, she was in every game, you know, she, she, and she starred in every game. I'm hoping that's the case for, for not only these last one or two year players, but the freshmen coming in. Yeah, it's definitely the case for, for AZ FUD for sure. And it, it definitely has been with Paige Beckers. Unfortunately, she did miss a, a whole entire season, but yeah, I think, you know, UConn is pretty blessed that they get to have uh multiple top 10 or, top 15, uh, you know, recruiting players that come out of high school and they usually get more than a couple or, or more than uh, just one player. So they're pretty but if lucky. You don't stay if you don't stay healthy, what does it really matter where you land on that ranking list? Yeah, and, and I think that the transfer portal, too, has been something – uh, that's kind of that's kind of got UConn in, in the past couple of seasons with uh, Sailor Poffenberger and Piath Gabriel and a couple yeah. other names as well that have transferred to other schools. So, uh, it, you know, it's kind of interesting how it's played out uh, in most recent years. But luckily, we do have some some pretty good players that have stayed that have been uh, high recruits. And of course, like you said, the, the three freshmen that came in this season that uh, we've, you know, we've heard all off season that they have a really high chance of getting a lot of minutes and hopefully they can stay healthy uh, and hopefully we get to see them uh, blossom and shine all four years here at UConn. All right. Talk about schedules. Adam Edmonds, Ryan goes, two is a totally justified spot. A healthy season for us could lead to the most highly anticipated championship game in years. LSU's schedule is a joke. We're going to talk about schedules today, Ryan. He says LSU's schedule is a joke. Is it possible we had two undefeated teams meet in the finals of March Madness? Well, talking about schedules, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now. I'm not going to say what games they'll lose, but I can tell you right now. I I as bad as I as as much as I want to say it, I don't I don't have the UConn Huskies going undefeated into March into March Madness. No, no, it, it, it's so tough. I, I think like Jason said it and probably a couple other people in the comments, it, it's so tough to predict a, a, an undefeated schedule or an yeah. undefeated season for any team. But uh, I, I don't think anybody's going to go undefeated, not even LSU. I, I think there's Ooh. just too much. There, there's too much <laughs> hype. There's too much expectations. I think they at least lose one. I, I would assume they play South Carolina twice since they're in the same conference. Probably Tennessee as well. That's kind of the only, I think, two opponents that they have to worry about in the SEC. But uh, the, the SEC is definitely not a pushover conference either. And, of course, anything can happen in March. So um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how LSU navigates through their season. And, and if they can make make it in the March undefeated, then props to them. But uh, it, it's not. It, it's definitely not easy going undefeated. Jason D'Amico, thanks for always having our back, brother. We appreciate you. We hope that you're there in four weeks because we want to meet you. We can't wait for that Maryland and Huskies matchup, Ryan. Number two, uh, Jason goes, number two makes sense. Let LSU have their time in the sun for now. If Paige and company are healthy, it is going to be a fun year no matter what the rankings. Peace, fellas. P.S. Talking about Paige is creepy. What? If we're talking about Michael Jordan, would anyone call us creepy? No, of course not. We admire and talk about Paige because we appreciate greatness when we see it, whether it be man or woman. Sounds like projection to me, just my opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I always love Jason's comments so much because uh, I feel like he he definitely understands what what we're trying to say, and I I, I know we definitely both appreciate him for that. Uh, but yeah, I I think that's that's ultimately what it comes down to. Uh, you and I both appreciate greatness so much, and when we see all these great athletes and uh, unique athletes play, we we want to share that with everybody and talk about it. 
uh, and, and, you know, kind of just live in the moment when it happens. And uh, Paige Beckers is, is one of those players that has shown greatness ever since, uh, ever since high school, really. And of course, just, you know, kind of, kind of expressed uh, that greatness onto a, a bigger stage and brought it to a bigger stage in UConn. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's so great that she is a UConn Husky. And of course we get to talk about her and the whole team, uh, you know, each and every, each and every day when we come on this podcast. And, you know, I have high expectations for these UConn Huskies. No pressure, right? No pressure because Ryan and I, everybody else, we have their back, right? We're going to be here all season breaking down uh, each game recap. But I can tell you right now, Ryan, uh, these simple words, it doesn't get easier. You just get stronger. And I think that's the case, Ryan. I think that this team will get stronger because – as we know, in March, it doesn't get easier. But I think I have full confidence that this team will only get stronger. It's Phil and Rye on Listen Up.